Welcome to our lecture online. About a week ago, we published a video in the Just for Fun video category, and it was titled, Should You Switch Doors to Win the Car? We have the link in the description box down below if you want to watch it. It might be a good idea to watch it to get familiarity with it. Now, what we want to use it here for is to see how using our own intuition of how the game should be played can really fool us. Our intuition often can lead us astray, even though we might think that our intuition is just ironclad and our logic just follows without any flaw, but that's not necessarily the case. When someone asks me, well, show me where I'm wrong, that's sometimes difficult to do because it's very difficult to pull ourselves out of that path, that logic path that we think is correct even when it isn't. So what should we do instead? It's better to ask, how do I do this correctly? What are the rules, the definitions, the laws that I should follow in order to help guide me? So let me tell you a little bit about this game. So there were three doors. One of them had a wonderful price, like a car. The other one had kind of a very mediocre price, for example, like a chicken. But we do know that if there's three doors and you pick one, you have one third chance that the price will be behind one of those three doors. And therefore, when you pick a door, you have one third chance you'll actually win the price. But now the game, the game host plays a little trick on you. He shows you another door that does not have the price and then asks you, do you want to now switch? Now that you know the price isn't here and you pick this door, maybe you want to switch to the other door. And then you think, well, why should I switch? Once I know the price isn't behind that door, there's only two doors left. So therefore, now I have a 50-50 chance that the price will be behind this door or the price will be behind that door. That seems logical and that's the key. It seems so logical. What would be wrong with that concept? And a lot of people are fooled by that. Well, hmm, is it really ironclad? Should we switch doors? Now let me show you why we may want to do that. And you know what? It's kind of interesting. It's kind of like when you go and take a test, a true false test or multiple choice test. Sometimes you just pick an answer and then you begin to doubt yourself and maybe you should switch. It turns out that the vast majority of the time when I see my students switch the answer from what they first wrote down to what they think it might be instead, they almost always change it from the right answer to the wrong answer. So typically, you want to stick with your gut instinct. But what if you have a multiple choice question and there's three possible answers and you have no idea what the right answer is, just not a clue, and you just by random just pick one of the answers? Then of course, you have one third chance you'll be right. But then if I then show you one of the other answers and tell you that is not the answer, should you now switch to the the one that you didn't pick and the one that I didn't show and the answer would be yes at that point you want to switch it's exactly the same as this is this game well let me show you why so here we're going to use the rules of how it actually works again there's three doors there's chickens behind two of the doors and a car behind the third door now let's say that each door if you pick one of the three doors you have one third chance that you pick the right door with the right price that you want but if you're going to pick this door, that means you have one third chance you win the prize. That means there's two third chance the prize is behind one of the other two doors. But if I now show you this door, now you realize, wow, we no longer have a one third chance. Now we have a zero chance that the prize will be behind that door because we opened the door and we saw that the price wasn't there. Does that now change the probability of this door? The answer is no, it doesn't. But the probability of the two doors combined here also doesn't change. There's still a two-thirds chance that the price will be behind these two doors. But since this one went down to zero chance, then this increases to two-thirds probability. With other words, now that I know it's not behind this door, and the probability for this door doesn't change, it's still one-third. It doesn't matter if I open one of the other doors or not, it's still a one-third probability. That now means there's a two-thirds probability that the price is behind that door. And as strange as it seems, it actually works. And again, if you want to see how it works, go back to this video, look at the description box, get the link, and take a look at it. It actually works. It's almost like magic, but really isn't magic. It's all about following the rules, the laws, and definitions by which probability and statistics work. And try it, and you'll see it. It actually does work that way. That is how it's done.